Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our second movie in my shameless uh, movie week. Uh, tonight we're looking at a film called Formula for a Murder. Now I believe this is a 1985 film, um, Italian, of course, uh, most of these films are. Um... <laughs> Uh, starring David Warbeck, uh, who's a bit of a... He was in The Beyond and The Last Hunter. It says on here, remember, this is just a film. Do not try this at home or anywhere, in fact. <laughs> Mad. Um, yeah, this is a 1980s film, which doesn't seem like it when you watch it. It actually seems a lot old, older than that. Um, it's a it's a sort of... Um, it's a little bit of a giallo feel to it, because the killer wears a black gloves and hats and stuff like that. And it's about... Uh, um, first of all, it starts off where we're at this outside this uh, church and this young girl's being chased by a priest up the stairs. And she drops her doll down the stairs. And then we cut to, like, the movie titles. Uh, and then when we get into the movie, it's about two... I don't know if they're sisters... But they're two women, either sisters or friends. One is disabled in a wheelchair, and the other one is like a, um, just sort of like helps her out. Becomes she calls her her legs, if you like, um, and they're quite close. But the um, the 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 woman that's in a wheelchair goes to this sort of um sporting sort of club where she's sort of like having some sort of relationship with her trainer there, and the girl. Um, who's her legs, if you like, is, is quite jealous. And you see her watching from the far um, as she's sort of like doing her sort of like um, events, um, like fencing and, and archery and things like this. And she's quite sort of jealous from the far. And this sort of film unfolds into sort of like a... It's one of those films like, is that the killer? Is that the killer? Is that the killer? Sort of thing. It starts off like that. Uh, and then the sort of um, story evolves into a, the uh, trainer asks the, the, the uh, disabled lady to marry him. And then he sort of persuades her and stuff like that. And then, um, but before all that sort of uh, kerfuffle happens, uh, we see a priest in a church getting murdered. Uh, in a church uh, with like a, our killer with the gloves and and the uh, cutthroat razor, so and the pre and he gets his throat cut. So we're we're we're, we're a vicar down and we don't know why and who it is. Um, and like I said, that's back to that main story. It just sort of evolves and they sort of get married. And the 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 um the the girl who looks after her against feeling very very sort of jealous. Of what's going on. So you kind of think. Is she the killer? Uh, and then another sort of priest. Comes to visit. At the house. And the other woman. Doesn't want her to see. The disabled lady. Tells her to come back another day. If you've got a reason to come here. Um, and all this sort of thing. And she doesn't want her. To seem to have any contact. With anyone. And this woman. Who's in the wheelchair. Seems quite well off. Because she's living in this. Lavish sort of. Um. Uh, house with grounds and stuff like that. She seems very, very rich. Um, no background story to any of these characters, so I, I can't tell you any. Um, so it's it sort of evolves, but then it sort of revolves around to where the, her, the trainer that's asked to marry her is in fact having an affair with the the, the other woman, um, and this is where it all sort of gets mixed and tangled up. And. Uh, the, the story sort of moves at a kind of slowish sort of pace. And now our disabled lady keeps having flashbacks because it turns out the beginning of the film with the young girl being chased up the stairs with a doll is her. And she was raped by the, um, uh, the priest, apparently. But there was no, there's no real sort of like indication how she's ended up in a wheelchair. I don't know, but uh, she, she's in this wheelchair and can't walk. But yeah, it turns out it was her as a victim. She keeps having flashback and dreams of this priest holding like this doll, which is now sort of bloodied. And she's and then another priest gets killed by our killer, the one that that came to visit. 
her at her house. He gets killed um, in the game. And all these sort of bizarre things are going on. And then all of a sudden, because it starts off, it starts off really good. I like the first sort of 20 minutes of the film to half an hour. It's a like, is that the killer? What's going on? Because it's all like a bit everywhere. But I quite like that because you're sort of guessing, who is this killer then? Who is it? Is it her? Is it the woman herself? You know, is it her friend? Is it one of the priests or whatever? But it, it's it's sort of, um, it, it's like that. But then we get to the priest, second priest killing and the killer reveals himself. Bam. And then the film changes and it's absolute rubbish. It just seems to go right downhill straight from there. Uh, because we know now who the killer is. And in the story, they try to save the film by giving it this sort of like storyline with the killer uh, and stuff like that. But it just doesn't work. It's it's so obvious um, sort of storyline. And it almost plays out like a, a sort of 80s TV movie. Now, I don't know if this was a TV movie. I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so because it's an 18 certification. But they were getting Italy, you don't know. Um, and it's sort of the film sort of just takes a nosedive downwards. Um, because when I first started to watch it, I thought this is this is going to be good. The characters are, are are rubbish. Uh, the, the the acting is cardboard. The script is terrible. The music doesn't fit the film. Perfect. It's brilliant. But then all of a sudden, it just sort of turns around to like this sort of almost plays out like a TV drama. And I just think, oh, I've lost interest in it now. But I, I saw it through to the end. But um, I wasn't surprised with the ending. It was obvious. And it was uh, disappointing. Um, but, say, because um, this was made out to be quite a good film. And, and like the cover gives you, oh, this is deranged killer with a yellow coat and the killer only actually wears that coat just once in the film it's just like well what's that about it's, it's not even a uh anything good and, and for something like a sort of david to put his himself into this film you know because he was amazing in the beyond he's an absolute legend but it just seems to have it was nowhere near as good as as that and and it just sort of pilted out as the film went on and when it was finished i thought oh Thank God it's over. So I'm going to score the film uh, Average Watch and give it a 6 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 6 because the, the the story started off really well and it was still got still got some great Italian goodness in it. It started off to play out like a giallo, but ended up playing out like a TV drama. I think it's the only way I could describe it. And, and, and it sort of like, it sort of lost my interest after about half an hour. And after an hour, I was just thinking, God, it must be ending soon sort of thing, you know. And, and it just kept going on and on. And some of the scenes were quite dragged out. You can see it. It's quite dragged out. But apart from that, you know, I did get something from it. Um, and that was like, you know, I did enjoy sort of like the music from the film. And I, I, I thought it was, you know... It, it, it could have been a good idea, but it, it just sort of like took a nosedive. But, you know, you get a little something out of it. That's why I give it an average watch, because it wasn't the worst thing I've seen, but it's far, far from anything good that I've seen. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Formula of, for a murder. Six out of ten. Any of you guys seen it? If you have, let me know down below what you think of it. I mean, I think it's got a little bit of a cult following. I mean... uh they did, they did release a, a limited edition of this, which came with a a yellow Mac inside. And I was just thinking, well, that's pointless, really, because he only wore the Mac once, and, and it was just like, yeah. It was just really sort of like, it just sort of flopped. <laughs> you know, but it just sort of bigged itself up in the first half an hour, and then it just sort of like lost its way. But I took time to watch it, so I thought I'm going to take time to review it and put it out there and there we are and that's the second film in my shameless week i will review another film later in the week but anyway guys thanks for tuning in if you have um till next time please check out some other horror channels check out horror hands the horror geek man v film rs design pizza well i am ice lord cat watches horror movies grumpy andrews haunted house and a massive shout out to my lad 
Till next time, please look after yourselves. Look after one another, and I really hope I see you all soon.